Welcome to the Study Abroad in Costa Rica and the Dominican Republic Info Meeting. My name is Genesis Herrera and I'm one of the regional advisors in the UCSB EEP office. Unfortunately, there weren't any returnees from these programs available to be here today, but if uh, but you will get a chance to hear from past returnees um, indirectly through pre-recorded videos that I will show during the presentation. I do have a video for each program, so hopefully hearing from these students through the videos will still be helpful. The focus of this meeting is to relay specific information about the programs we offer in each of these countries. We plan to cover program specific info, eligibility requirements, and steps for filling out the application. So let's start with Costa Rica. In Costa Rica, we only offer one program that is focused on tropical biology and conservation that takes place in Monte Verde, which you can see where the star is here on the screen. Enjoy pura vida, as they say, the simple things in life with the laid back and optimistic Costa Rican people who are very passionate about the natural beauty of their country. Monteverde is one of the richest wildlife sanctuaries in the tropics, attracting biologists from all over the world. Imagine waking up to the calls of howler monkeys and mist rolling in before you trek into the cloud forest each day for class or field work. With the increasing threats to natural habitats earthwide, spending time studying and researching existing ecological treasures is more important than ever. In Monteverde, you will arrive, um, you will arrive as a student and return home with the skills and portfolio of a scientist. Throughout this program, instructors introduce new methods and environments for learning. Instruction will take you outdoors, sometimes at night, sometimes in early morning. Heavy rainfall and dramatic temperature changes are common. Field activities are physically demanding and will involve swimming, climbing, long distance hikes over rough terrain. The activities are a core part of the curriculum and something to consider when deciding if this program is the right fit for you. If you do decide to participate, you'll have the opportunity to research eco ecology, biology, and natural history in the cloud forests, oceans, and mountains of Costa Rica. Monte Verde, based high in the protected cloud forest, is a rural community of bicultural and bilingual people. As a conservation and ecotourism destination, it attracts biologists from all over the world. Start with a rigorous two-week camping and hiking trip through national parks and ecological zones. Lectures, lab work, and field studies build your skills as a researcher. Program treks and course activities are physically intense but come with big rewards. Discover spider monkeys, exotic butterflies, birds, and orchids. At the conclusion of the program, you'll have built a formidable research portfolio, which will be very beneficial if you decide to apply to graduate school after graduation. Here are just some photos of the field station where you will be living most of the time. Um, as you can see here, it looks um, uh, like what I think of as a sim summer camp cabin. Um, and so the students definitely bond to get very close, not just to each other, but also to the instructors and coordinators um, who run the program. This program takes place during both fall and spring quarters and all students take the same courses, which you can see here on the screen. Because it is a very focused program, it is only open to biology majors and other majors within the biology department and environmental studies majors. If you have an interest in Latin America but are not in these majors, there are other wonderful programs that we offer in other countries that may be good fits for you. Housing arrangements will change according to where you are in the program, but either way, housing will be with other UC students for the most part, with the exception of a week-long homestay experience that you will have with locals from the area. In order to participate, you must have a 2.5 GPA at the time that you apply and maintain that minimum GPA until your departure. You usually apply two quarters in advance of your program, so you must have the GPA when you are applying and keep it until you leave. You must also be a junior class standing based on your unit count by the time of your departure. And finally, you must have completed three biology courses by the time of your departure. These are usually the introductory MCDB and EEMB courses. And it's recommended that you take at least one upper division bio course before departure, but it is not uh, required. A statistics course and any laboratory experience you can get before departure is also highly recommended, but also not required. 
This is a program that does have a set number of spots for UCSB participants. In the past, this cap has not been an issue and all eligible applicants have been able to participate. However, in the event that I receive more applicants than I have spots for, unfortunately, your spot would not be guaranteed and I will have to move into a selection process. It is highly encouraged that you identify a backup program you'd be open to participating in should it not work out with this program as your first choice. Now we will play a video where you will hear from two past Costa Rica participants. So hopefully this can provide you with good peer-to-peer um, -peer feedback about the program. The program is called um, Tropical Biology and Conservation, so it's extremely oriented on sustainability conservation. So especially if you guys are E and B majors, ecology, evolution, it's a really good program for that. Everyone would have a good time in this program. You don't even have to be a bio major to go. It's a little bit difficult as a bio major to study abroad because we have so many requirements. In some programs you go and you don't necessarily get major credit, but in this program you actually end up ahead. You get, I think it was three, three yeah, upper division, three upper classes. division classes, tropical ecology, tropical biodiversity, tropical diversity, and then the research practicum, which counts as an upper division class. So in terms of that, it's amazing. You, I mean, you go through this crazy experience, and it's it's basically like you're on vacation the entire time, and then you come back with probably more units than you would have for major credit than you from just staying at the university, so. And this program is pretty unique. It's not really a traditional study abroad experience. I'd say probably three weeks of the whole program was devoted to field trips. And so this was one of them. We're checking out a wildlife refuge here. This right here is a picture of a, a toucan in captivity. It's an ocelot in captivity. The first uh, two weeks of the program, you are, it's, they call it the initial field trip. And you go to a variety of different places. One of the places, which was my personal favorite, you stay on an island and you sleep in tents the entire time. Um, it was really cool for a full week. If you like backpacking, you like being outdoors, adventure, this is definitely the program for you. This here is Patia Field Station, uh, again, early on in the program. On the stick there, that's a fur lance snake. So you're like, you're really out there. The program director talks to you a lot about like, hey, avoid snakes, always wear, cl wear closed toe shoes. You're actually using the rainforest as your classroom, which is like an incredible experience. At this station, actually, you can't see them in the picture, but we were sleeping out on the porch here, basically, in sleeping bags, and you're right underneath spiders that are as big as your palm. <laughs> Nature-wise, like you see an incredible diversity of species, spiders, snakes, like monkeys, everything. Um, on the island, like you go snorkeling a lot, and if you choose to, you can. Uh, if you have your certification, you can go scuba diving. And I mean, you, we were swimming with sea turtles. We saw, we saw sea turtle eggs hatch, and the babies like go down to the ocean, like you see in nature documentaries. It's it's essentially like being in a nature documentary. Uh, yeah. It's a scorpion. So I, yeah, we got to we got to hold scorpions. Um, scorpions in Costa Rica are not like lethally poisonous or venomous, rather. Uh, one of the girls actually got stung by one on the island, and she was totally fine. I held that scorpion for a while, it was pretty cool. Tia Field Station is really good because there's a lot of like ponds and wetland areas, so it's really good to see turtles and frogs. While we were there, there was like a, like a mating boom, and like if you just walked anywhere near the pond, you would hear all the frogs, and it was just really incredible for a few nights there. Another picture of the jungle. A lot of the program, you're like pretty much backpacking through the rainforest, which is an incredible experience. Everyone gets a pair of rubber boots on loan, so that you can just walk through mud, walk through rivers. This is one of our nature hikes where we had a professor and instructor with us, and it's just like a really chill out, chilled out experience because you just walk through, and the instructor says, "Look at this plant. This is the ecological significance of this. Check out this spider. This is kind of cool." You just see like every meter of the rainforest is covered in something new, like you, you see a new species, a new plant everywhere you go. The instructors are incredible. Frank Joyce is the head of the program and he's just amazing. He's Everyone loves him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're in the rainforest with your professors and what like you see something, they explain what it is, and you're writing down your notebook. So it's extremely field oriented. It's not like a, a 
a standard classroom setting really which I thought was amazing. I, I, I feel like I personally learned a lot more from this like hands-on experience than I ever would have just in a regular classroom. This was the boat ride to the island that we stayed on for five nights. This is kind of an interesting geological feature because um, Costa Rica is on the confluence of two different tectonic plates. This is one of the plates coming up over the other one. You can see how all those lines are like in parallel. Those are just all the plates that came up. But that's the biological research station right there. That's kind of home base. And then a little bit above it in the picture is a grove where we uh, where we set up our tents. So the, the program is pretty varied through part of the time you're sleeping in tents. A lot of the time you spend with the, the rest of the group in like dorm style living. Part of the time you do homestays with local families and that's the, like pretty cool like the cultural immersion that you get there. You don't have to speak Spanish, that's not a prerequisite. I don't speak any Spanish when I'm being a student. <laughs> Apart from obviously getting to see all the amazing nature and everything, you, you get a real sense of like the culture in, in a Spanish-speaking country. And uh, while you're uh, doing the homestay with a Costa Rican family, during those two weeks, it's just devoted to, uh, to research. You get to do an independent research project on this trip that counts for one full upper division E and B class. And it's just a really incredible experience because you can't possibly get published. Uh, I think I'm going to try to get my study published with one of the professors here. Yeah. I researched uh, nocturnal lepidoptera, uh, which are moths, <laughs> um, and the effect of habitat fragmentation. I'm concerned with like conservation sustainability. I studied a cryptic uh, dry forest tree called Rivera trinervis that pretty much hasn't been researched by anyone ever. Yeah. It gets a couple of mentions in a couple of papers, but other than that, it was kind of in the dark was actually really cool. That was probably the most valuable part of the entire trip was the fact that um, you do, it's essentially like a research project that you complete from beginning to end. The research uh, part of the course is really cool because you can pick whatever you want. If you saw something on a hike or something that you're like, oh, that, that's interesting, anything you want, you can study. So it was really cool having the ability to just pick something you're interested in and just do an entire project on it and have it count as a full class. And of course the instructors help you out a lot with the research yeah. project. They give you ideas for what statistics and data to take, mm -hmm. how to process it, how to put it into graphs, and then how to make sense of it. What do you guys have next plan? For me it's grad school and that's something that I'm putting on my resume and it's definitely gonna help. One of the classes that you take for two units is agroecology. So you get to visit a lot of farms. Right here, this is a picture of a sustainable, mostly sustainable coffee farm. And you get to talk about a lot of the cool practices that they've implemented that can be applicable for, uh, for use in the States as well. How physically demanding was the program? You don't have to be in like excellent shape or anything, but you shouldn't, yeah, you shouldn't be unhealthy. <laughs> our, our longest trip took the slowest kids, like not even the whole morning, just a few hours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this actually, this program, this actually, actually helped me graduate on time. <laughs> <laughs>
This is a rare opportunity to acquire practical skills as a bilingual health professional through six weeks of courses in semi-urban San Diego, a week-long clinical rotation in a rural area, and another rotation in urban Santo Domingo. So you spend time in a total of three places, the majority of it in Santiago, of course, but you also get a week again in a rural area doing a rotation in a, in a clinic. And you also get to see um, how public health is addressed in the urban capital of Santo Domingo. Learn medical terminology in Spanish and how to interact with patients and medical staff in clinical settings. Leave with a unique understanding of health management, preventative medicine programs, and current development issues facing underserved areas in this country. This program is unfortunately only run in the summertime and it is administered by CIEE, which is the Council for International Education Exchange. You will take classes with American students only and all students will take the courses listed here on the screen, unless of course they change by the time you get abroad, but they have remained um, pretty, pretty consistent across the years. There is only one housing option on this program and that is to live with a homestay family, which is an excellent way to work on your Spanish language skills. Um, and if you are a financial aid recipient and specifically a Pell Grant recipient, there is also specific grants, there are also specific grants um, that you can apply for to help fund this specific program. Um, so if you want to learn more about that and other scholarship opportunities, please talk to me afterwards. Um, but just know that, you know, again, especially if you're a Pell Grant recipient, there's um, additional funding opportunities available for you here. I had the opportunity to visit some of my students on this program back in 2017. And here are some photos I took during my visit. So the first one in the top left is um, the entire UC group that was there for the summer. There were 10 students who were there from all the UC campuses. Um, and so this was kind of the group photo that we took. The top right is a photo that I took when I visited a homestay family for one of my students. So um, I had a student who was housed here and the other student was from UC Berkeley. So there were two students in the home, but they each had their own room. The family was absolutely wonderful and they lived pretty um, you know, proximate to the university. So I believe for the most part, they would walk unless it would get really hot and then they would take an Uber. Um, but they, you know, spent a lot of time with the family, the meals were held um, together, at least dinner was every day. And, um, you know, again, it's an excellent way to work, not just on your Spanish skills, but also just to learn more about um, Dominican culture. And the bottom two photos were taken during my shadowing of um, the students a group of the students when they were doing their clinical rotations in the afternoon after classes. So I was only there for this one day in which I shadowed them throughout the whole day. And so the clinical portion of, of it on this particular day that I happened to visit on um, entailed going out into the community to do vaccine distributions and other medication distributions. So I was told most of the time they would be, you know, at their health center and kind of shadowing the doctor and assisting with patients who were coming in while they were waiting. Um, but on this specific day, we happened to go out into the community, um, you know, and the doctor did her round of the neighborhoods, kind of gathering people up to let them know that we were there. And we were posted up in this kind of community building that was at the entrance of, of the neighborhood. And, um, you know, we just got to see how it is that they address public health here, how it is that, you know, we get these resources out to families, how it is that, you know, young pregnant girls are, are being helped, you know, in their communities without access to a lot of the other centers in the city and just a lot of other things that we got to um, experience and witness kind of in action, which was really cool. Um, and then here are just a couple of other pictures from uh, a past student, Mo, and this is her homestay mom on the right side and the mother's daughter on the left side, which she um, called her little sister. So again, it's a, a very enriching experience, I think, to be able to stay with a homestay family. For this program, you must be a junior or a senior uh, you know, a junior or senior class level based on your unit count, not your actual year in school by the time that you'd be leaving. And it requires that you have um, two years of Spanish or it's equivalent by the time that you would be leaving. So um, if you're a second language learner, that would mean that you would need to complete Spanish level six before going. 
If you're a native or heritage Spanish speaker, that means that you would have to complete Spanish 16A before going, unless you can test beyond that level, um, then you would perhaps not have to take any Spanish before going at all. Um, so please do check with your Spanish department for more information about where you currently place or come and talk to me at some point um, and I can kind of guide you along. And the program finally does require that you have a 2.5 GPA at the time that you're applying and maintained through your departure. And the 2.5 GPA also applies to the GPA within just your language classes. So if you have taken Spanish at UCSB, I will calculate the GPA um, just within your language classes. And here are just some additional scenic photos. So you can see the beauty of um, you know, this Caribbean island, which I have had um, the wonderful opportunity to visit now twice. And finally, I will play a video for you where you will hear from Mo, who was just in the photos I showed um, on the previous slides. Are, they have such youthful souls. They're all just so happy and welcoming. And you know, anywhere I went, I never felt too much like a stranger. Dominican food is really good. Actually, not spicy, which some people think like all food has like salsa and everything. But no, Dominican food is actually really savory and a little on the saltier side, but really good. Everything is um, plantain based, but it was amazing. Um, Dominican Spanish is different than what you learn in the classroom. It's a lot faster, but they're always really patient with you and they still love that you are trying. Our day start at 8 a.m. So we would wake up, um, my host mom would have breakfast made for us. And so we would have our Spanish class first and then our pre-professional healthcare issues class. So the professors, they break things down for you. So those two classes, they would, and then uh, we would have lunch. So on the days that we had clinic, we would eat lunch that we had brought from home, and then we would travel to local clinics. For days that we didn't have clinic, um, I would just go home for lunch and kind of chill there, depending on what we had um, in terms of homework. And then dinner with the family, and then sometimes we'd go out. So that was kind of the basic day. We would travel to local clinics and they would work with their doctors on different projects, kind of see the different um, healthcare problems that were going on. A lot of them um, had to do a lot of diabetes, hypertension, um, a lot of times there'd be um, a lot of pregnant women in some com communities, so you really got to work with them hands-on, so that was one thing that was really unique, especially going to the Dominican Republic. You're able to talk to them, really ex um, experience everything. I learned how to do blood pressure and was really like right there um, as the doctor would treat all these patients for all these different um, things that they came in for, so that was really exciting for me because I'm pre-med, so just being hands-on just right there in the moment. That was really cool. I was a host family, so that was really amazing. Um, I got really, really close to my host mom, and then her sister was very close to the family too, so I got very close to her, her husband, and her two-year-old um, daughter. A lot of the host moms, they've been doing it for a while. Um, the university has all these families that they do regular um, you know, homestays with. So typically the host families do know what to expect and if not, they're given a lot of guidelines to, do, to you know, make sure the students are feeling comfortable. I feel like I'm still part of the family and they always say like, please come back and visit, like we wanna see you again and still keep in contact with them. Our program there are a few weekend trips that we take as a group but then other weekends they don't have anything 
and they really encourage you to check out different places so this was a weekend trip that I took with some friends um, we went to the beach we went on a banana boat um, we went snorkeling and a lot of different things um, another trip which we did as a group we went to a waterfall um, so it was a hike and then we swam a lot of people jumped off the waterfall and I did too so that was really fun use those weekends to travel I would recommend it for sure I mentioned that I'm pre-med I'm going to take a gap year or two before going to med school um, and that was kind of already in plan um, before going um, this program really opened my eyes to public, the public health aspect of, you know, medicine and just looking more into the social side of, you know, people's um, circumstances and things like that. I think having hands-on experience is so much more important than just learning in school about public health systems or, you know, how glycolysis works. So just being hands-on and working with people um, really brings back that aspect of it rather than just memorizing a bunch of information for a test. So really just made me more passionate about it. All right, I hope you enjoyed that and the previous video. Um, we've covered a lot of information about many programs offered within, you know, EEP and specifically these two programs today. I'm sure you're feeling overwhelmed with information. So I'll quickly go over some next steps and then I'll open it up for Q&A. So hang in there, we're almost done. The first thing you should do is decide on when you want to go abroad as these programs are offered during different terms. Attend more info sessions this quarter if you're still looking for other information regarding EEP or if you're still deciding on what program um, you want to apply for. We have a whole team of peer advisors and returnee volunteers who are available to help you on your journey. You can see a lot of them here on the screen. Um, and you can find our calendar of events, our PA and open hour information and advisor drop in hour information on our UCSB EEP website under contact us. If you don't already have one, apply for a passport as soon as possible. If your passport will expire anytime soon, you should also apply for a renewed passport. Students must have passports valid for at least six months after their projected end date of their programs. So plan ahead. It does need to be valid for quite a while from now. Um, and look through the courses offered on these programs through the Gaucho Credit Abroad Database and the UCEP course catalogs. Um, all of this information can be found on the academic section of the program pages on the UCEAP website. And if you plan to study abroad next summer, next fall, or next year, you will have to apply for the, your program this upcoming winter quarter. The deadline for all our the deadlines for all our programs are listed on our website under the Apply Now tab. And on the screen here, you can see when the Dominican Republic summer application for 2021 is and the Costa Rica, oops, the Costa Rica fall application um, due dates. Please email me or sign up for an appointment if you have more questions about programs in Costa Rica or the Dominican Republic. You can sign up for an appointment on Shoreline during my drop-in hours, which you can see here on the screen. And if you cannot make the times listed on the screen, please email me for a separate appointment. And finally, take a chance. I know things are very daunting right now with all of the uncertainties we're facing, but you have nothing to lose by applying and we are here to help you along the way. Studying abroad is an extremely valuable experience that we believe all students should have the opportunity to do. And these two programs in particular are very niche and non-traditional experiences that you really can't get at UCSB. So please connect with us if you want to learn more. Thank you for listening to this presentation. I will now stop recording and open it up for Q&A.